Alright. Hello everybody, and welcome to another Lobster Bits Plays video. Today we're playing a game called Sagebush. This is a first person, lo-fi styled artistic game about what seems to be uh, an investigation into an abandoned cult site. As far as I know, this is based on true events that have happened with real cults in real life. Um, so we'll get a deep dive into maybe what people were thinking, what they thought about their leader, there's any sort of something going on between, you know, leader and people, who knows. But yeah, today we'll uncover what happened to this cult and go from there. So with that, let's just hop into this video. Hello? I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. Hmm. Maybe James is the call leader. I'm not sure we'll figure it out though. We'll have to wait and see. Wait and see, Redact Games presents. A game by Nathan by Nathaniel Burns. Barons, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Wrong. Sagebrush. I love this art style, man. This is so beautiful. Black Sage Ranch, 250 miles northwest of Albuquerque. Site of 1993 Perfect Heaven Mass Suicide. Oh shit. There's a giant UFO in the sky, everybody. This is where they everybody goes when everybody died. Can I get... Press E to interact. Okay. Examine our car. This is really sensitive. Jeez. Not gonna lie. You're surprised it actually made it all the way up here. You brought some gear in the trunk. Well, that's good to know. Just gonna check out the front. Okay. We'll go to the trunk. Shift to sprint. Nice. Open trunk. Oh, we're gonna get some pliers or wire cutters. Inventory. Cool. Let's go around. Maybe I can fit. Use an item, interact with an object to bring up the inventory. Press E. Alright, well, that's the way we're gonna use the wire cutters, I guess. The wire cutters clip through the rusting fence easily and create a small hole. Cool. How far into this can I walk? Not very. Okay, wasn't sure if I could break out or something and go elsewhere. So we got a large building here. Some some trees. Ah, yes. The all-seeing eye pyramid. Illuminati confirmed. Do 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 do. Okay. Not funny. Uh, I can't tell what that says from here. Something about faith, I think. We'll come back. Diesel generator. There's a keyhole next to the ignition button. You wonder if there's any gas remaining. Alright, so we gotta find some gas to turn on the generator. Won't lie. A quick glance, I thought that was a basketball hoop. Gotta have fun somehow. Out here in the desert, in the cult, away from everybody. Now I'm curious that I'm walking around here. I understand that that's a backdrop, but I wonder if that farm in the distance is actually rendered in. I don't think I'm going to be able to get there. That's okay. Don't stare at the sun for too long, you'll go blind. That's pretty dark. Read pamphlet. It's too dark to read anything. Fair enough. It can be a little confusing getting around our little home. Don't worry, sister. Anne has printed some maps to help you get act acclimated but map press M okay so we're at the community hall so we yeah we might actually be able to get out to the 
Yeah, we can get out there, just not at the moment. Oh, and we can zoom. That's cool. Okay, so right now we're at Community Hall. Andrew's trailer, Peyton. So that's the where people, I'm guessing, lived. There's a school to teach you about all of the wrong culty things that you should ignore. I hope there's not somebody in here with me. Somebody closed the doors. Can we just leave these open? That'd make me feel a lot more comfortable. Use the light switch. I need the generator. Gotta find a gas. Moldy dishes litter the table, stained and dusty. There's no food, though. Wild animals likely finish the scraps. Fair enough. I mean... Animals gotta eat. Same thing here. Perfect heaven awaits those of faith. Damn. What exactly means those of faith? What describes those of faith? A nice instrument once. Now the strings are rusted and lacquered faded. Unfortunate. I'm sure that was me just making a step, but I feel like there's somebody who's gonna jump out at me. I need some goddamn light in this place. I can't see anything. Cardboard cardboard boxes labeled utensils, decorations, grains, etc. Okay. Cereal boxes. Tons of cereal boxes. None of the sugary stuff, though. That's how you know it's the good stuff. Whole wheat. Wheaties. Good stuff. Cheerios. Good stuff. Slacks of cardboard boxes storing everything from jars of yeast and jars of jam to paper plates and replacement light bulbs. Nothing, though. Nothing. Can I crouch behind anything? No, this place seems to be... Yep, still too dark. Hoping I find a key here. To something. You open the door and immediately slam it shut after the overwhelming stench of rotting meat hits your nostrils. I can only imagine what was in that place. Or in that fridge. You fiddle with the knobs. There's no hiss of gas. No clicking ignition. This range is long dead. Fuse box. Generator key. Nice. That's what we want to see. Performance schedule. Josiah plays original hymns. Tuesday's gospel reading. Wednesday, Juliet violin recital. Another gospel reading. Note, the power has been pretty finicky lately. You might have to restart the generator to get the lights back on. The key is in the box and the generator is out around the side. So, maybe we just need the key and no gas. You turn the key and press the button. The generator hums to life. Awesome, so we can get some lights on. Have you sinned? Are you plagued by doubt? Do you fear death? Do you have the nagging feeling that your church doesn't have the answers? There is a reason Father James can help. Interesting. That's how they get you. Get to know the newest members of the flock. Welcome them with open arms and open hearts. My name is Christopher. I'm from Flagstaff. I was a farmer before and hope to lend my expertise to help the flock. Help feed the flock. Fun fact, I hold the record for the most blue ribbons at the Arizona State Fair Livestock Competition. I'm Viola. My two wonderful children, my son Lucas and daughter Juliet, are from Frenzo. From, eh, from Fresno. I'll be helping out with some schooling our children in the ways of the Lord. Fun fact, I was born in Vancouver, so I'm technically also Canadian. Boo. <laughs> Blame Canada. I'm kidding. Love Canada. Hello, I'm Peyton. I'm from a small town in Oklahoma. You've probably never heard of it. I ran a grocery store in town, but ever since it shut down, I've been looking for something more. Father James is helping me find that. I serve in the Navy for a term. Good for him. Hello, friends. I'm Candace. I love cooking and crafts. So hope, so hope I can help energize the flocks that may that we may fulfill His word. Fun fact: I can speak three languages. Cool. Candace is fun. Candace is fun. I'm Josiah. There's always a Josiah in a cult. And I'm so thankful to you and to the Lord for giving me a home after years living on the streets. I finally feel like I have a family. Fun fact, blank. The fun fact is how long he was homeless for. 
or even what kicked him out on the street. That's a fun fact. Kind of kind of dark, but it's it's fine. Hello, I'm Lillian. I was a student at USC before I dropped out because I couldn't stand the indoctrination anymore. I was looking for truth, and I didn't find it there. Now I know I was looking in the wrong place. I've been to four continents in the last three years. Interesting. Sometimes just college isn't it for people, you know? Gotta find it elsewhere. Don't join a cult, though. That's... My name is Vance. I saw through the lies of my parents' church. They were filling our heads with blasphemy. Now I see the truth of it because Father James. Fun fact, I'm a really fast reader. I wonder if I can read faster than Vance. My name is Vance. I saw through the lies of my parents' church. They were filling our heads with the blasphemy. Now I see the truth because of Father James. That was spot on. No errors. Screw you, Vance. This painting shows an intensely focused middle-aged man. He holds a book in his left hand. The painting seems less than professional, but the man's determination shows through. Dude's got a nice beard, too. Copyrighted. It's a book on... Excuse me, a book on copyright. <laughs> an angel walks through an empty field, his hands pressed throughout, together in prayer. Happy thing. The painting depicts an angel tenderly crating the corpse of Jesus in his tomb. That's sad. Alright, let's check out the rooms here. Turn on the light. Nice. Oh, they had ping pong. How does anybody play ping pong there? This is why you don't join cults. Because you don't get ping pong set up. and you can't, they, It's just there to stare at. You don't even have fun with it. You take a book off the shelf. We know the conspiracy can trace itself back as far as the 4th century. When Athanasius and his, cron and his cronies first began to exclude essential works from the Bible. That's fair. You flip through a pamphlet on the shelf. There's an ancient law that modern society has fought to bury. The role of man is to protect and nourish the flesh. The role of the woman is to protect and nourish the soul. Nourish the soul. <laughs> you take the Bible from the shelf and skim. For Christ and also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in spirit. A ping pong table. It's the only game you see around. Doesn't seem that there's enough room to play. Exactly. That's why you don't join cults. They don't know how to play games. They just want you to devote your time and space to the cult leader. Have all your children. Super selfish. And you can't play ping pong. That's the main thing you got to take away from it. You can't play ping pong. You can't play games. It's no fun. <laughs> all right. We're going to keep the music playing. I like the ambience. Not the best music, but it is sound. We like sound. Oh, we got toilet. Looks a little, a little, a little clogged. That's all right. Can I see myself? You look tired. I wonder if time is moving while I'm in here. I don't think so, but I can't be sure. I can't be too sure. Note to Leonard. The pantry is not your personal snack drawer. Food is the flock to share. <laughs> if you keep stealing cookies from the storeroom, you'll have to answer for your crimes in the cleansing room. Please pray and reflect on your actions and how they harm the flock. I'm praying for you too. That's passive aggressive, so Leonard's a chunky. Probably a little, a little chunky kid. <laughs> I want to see what that room looks like. I am so curious. They have barbecue Tuesdays? Hell yeah. Beef stew Fridays, pork chop Thursday, spinach casserole. Eh. Due to power outage, food stores have spoiled. We will have to replace the planned meals with canned foodstuffs and produce and produce until un, until new supplies are required. Fun stuff. Kitchen prayer. Enable us to use that manifold blessings with moderation. Grant our hearts and wisdom to avoid excess in eating and drinking. And in the cares of his life, teach us to put our trust in thee and wait to await thy helping hand. That's eh, whatever. Nothing exciting there. Just don't be a glutton, is basically what that's saying. Leonard hasn't heeded warnings about taking more than his share of food. He keeps swiping snacks from the storage room. Until we can straighten him out, I've decided to move his favorite foods into the farm shed and hide the key on the side of the bookshelf next to the ping pong table. So I go next to the ping pong table and get the key. Cool. And we'll knock down the cupboards. He will never move them. He can't. He's too weak. 
Leonard is too weak. So I'm gonna go get that key real quick. Now, which side of the bookshelf is the real question? There it is. Pick up gate key and farm shed key. Cool. Both in, conveniently in the same place. Ouch. Door just slammed in my face. Piece of garbage. Cool. The rusting locks fight back, but eventually relents in the gate and locks. Fun story about me. I played soccer for a number of years, and we used to put nets away. Well, our lock... Oh, this is beautiful. See, this is nice. The scenery-wise, this is nice. But the culty aspects of it, that's less than ideal in my opinion. But hey, to each their own, right? You live and let live. Anyway, we... I had, was putting the net away, and I, we had an, a rusty old lock on it. And I was struggling to close it. Well, it wouldn't close all the way, so, you know, had to push really hard. Well, silly me, stupid me rather, got my pinky caught as it finally gave through and smashed down. And I took like a whole chunk out of my pinky. And I was just like, ah, I was freaking out like I had tetanus or something. I had recently got my shots, so I was fine, but like... Damn, that was painful. I had to wore a white shirt. I had it all wrapped around my fingers. I had a giant blood stain. I got home. I like sprinted home that day too. Good times, good times. Oh, so they just like lived in trailers here, huh? Cozy living. Can I go inside? I can. And just a cute little bed. You know, it's just simple. So simple. It's like some of the stuff you take for granted. But like, at the same time though, this is what people used to live like a long time ago, just in small huts. Brother Aaron. Doors rusted shut. Can I, like, kick it down? No. Can I see inside? Brother Aaron's. No, I cannot. I'm guessing this is where they showered? Yeah, community showers. How about that? It's simple, but it worked. Probably cold water. Didn't get hot water. Outside toilet. <laughs> Imagine getting walked on while you're just like taking a <laughs> It's no fun. And another generator. Cool. And this is the schoolhouse. Lucas John and Lu Juliet's jackets. You rustle through the pockets and find nothing. That's unfortunate. Um, got books on their desks, probably Bibles, presumably, of some kind. Okay, desks are all falling over. In the way. And we just gotta read John's assignment. It's too dark. Okay, and where's the light switch? Awesome, I can see. Oh my god, that's so much better. Okay, read note to Juliet. Juliet, honey. Why are you so stubborn? Why do you reject the flock's love? You don't pay attention in class. You don't try hard in your assignments, and you lie about doing your readings. I'm worried about you. I've asked Father James to take some time to speak with you, one-on-one. -on -one. Please listen to him. He knows so much. He can help soothe your doubts, I promise. Just give it a try. Love, Mom. That's cute. Now, I wonder... I often helped Viola in the schoolhouse. I enjoyed working with the children. We taught them reading, writing, scripture. Viola was one of the most faithful among us. If Anne was like the mother of the flock, Viola was the older sister. I remember one lecture she gave the children on the nature of hell that was so vivid, so unflinching, it had the kids in tears. I told her she was scaring them, and she said, good, they should be scared. Interesting. Viola was an interesting one. Her faith to the cult really helped cement, I'm sure, values into the other kids. That's all they experienced, especially if they're either born here or, you know, if they were... You know, not just born here, but, you know, this is most of their life. If they got in here young, you know, 
they're not going to want to upset those around them. They want to do good. If they're stuck in this cult, they have no outside influence except if they question things and don't tell anybody. Anyway. Anyway, a big role model for me is the Father James. He's a prophet of Jesus and a great person. He's going to save all our souls and let's go to heaven. Father James is funny and smart too. He makes jokes during his talks that make everyone laugh. He'll show you can be a very good person if you're a little bit weird looking. It's what is on the inside that matters. For teaching me that and for saving my soul, Father James is my role model. I love him and Jesus. Wonderful work, Lucas. Father will be proud. Oh, that's cute. Anne is my biggest role model. She's just perfect. She's a perfect wife and mother to all of us. Just like Mary, she does everything as she did to help Father James. She thinks about everyone else before she thinks about herself. I hope to be just like her if I grow up before the days of reckoning. Good work, Ellie. I'd be proud of you to hear this. You'll have many chances to be just like her in paradise, so don't worry. Damn, that's just so... It just baffles me that people can get so caught up in this stuff. It is insane. And it's not even their fault. It's not. Because at first, t pe people typically question it. Typically. But there's always just something that reels them in. And it's unfortunate. <laughs> My role model is Jesus because he's perfect and he loves everyone. I want to be more like Jesus. <laughs> See me after class. <laughs> the lack of trying again. That's funny. Leonard and Peyton are my role models. They know how to fight and how to protect a flock from Satan and secular bad guys. Good work, John. Hope it never comes to violence. That's another thing, though. Like, over in Waco, things got super violent. It's crazy. They didn't want violence, but it got violent. Because that's how the government be sometimes, and... You can you can make out faded writing from the last lesson. The first revelation the day of Father James received the truth. Back to what I just said though, it's, it's very deep stuff. Should look into Waco yourselves, I think. There's some interesting lore bits about what was going on there. You take a book off the shelf, the illustrated book of Bible stories. Some of the pages are torn out. There are multiple copies of the book of serial flipping and Flipping through, you see major inconsistencies in the different versions. There's a young Earth creationist textbook called The True History of the Earth. Uh, it's interesting that they tore pages out. Didn't agree with what they were saying, I'm sure. What the cult was teaching. Okay, so I didn't get anything out of that, really. Other than check out more of the cabins. Okay, so where am I? I'm going towards the rectory. If I go this way. There's something so beautiful about this. And if done right, it can also be super terrifying. And I wonder how easy it is to make games like this, because there's a lot of them that I've been playing lately that are just like this. There's seven golden stars on the lock, and a space for what appears to be an eighth. So I need an, a circle thing. Can't get in. I'm guessing that's a bunch of bugs? Interesting. Is that blood? Oh, boy. This should be fun. Okay, so I need to go to the farm shed, which is, I'm guessing, over here. Alright, why is this... That's a farm shed, right? Where am I? Cleansing room... Mi oh, that's to the mines. We don't want to go to the mines. So the farm shed is more over to the right, south... Well... Southwest of the cleansing room, if we're following the map. And that would also explain that, being a minecart. What do we got here? What do we got over here? Couple boxes... Yeah, we got a couple boxes. A certified B and a bona fide box. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Alright. Spoopy. Cabinet examined jacket. A ragged old jacket. 
You ruffle through the pockets, coughing at the dust. <laughs> and you find a key. Okay, now what kind of key do we find? Looks like these might have been jars of jam and picked pickled vegetables. Now they're just disgusting. Block. Did I get the key? Okay. Andrew's trailer. Okay, so we can go to Andrew's trailer now. Andrew's journal. Too dark. Tape deck. The first time I met Father James, I was immediately filled with a sense of peace. It's hard to explain. I guess he just seemed so sure. He asked if I was a believer. I said I'd been raised Catholic, but it never clicked. There's a reason for that, he said. They've been lying to you, all of them. And I knew he was right. Interesting. You know, the fun thing about growing up and getting older is, you know, trying to find some form of, for some, some form of higher up power. And then we all get curious about that because some people were, you know, raised as Catholic, some people raised Protestant, some people raised Jewish, some people raised Muslim, blah, 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 blah. All of which are fine. But some people, you know, just, start questioning everything and sometimes just the teachings don't make sense to us sometimes they don't seem right sometimes they don't seem like i said they just don't seem right and they don't click like that but it it fascinates me about the cult mind about you know searching for a greater answer is something that often blinds us from something else like 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 the cult here for example you know blinds us from believing or wanting to be right about there being a higher power that you just blindly follow the first guy who just you know says everything you've taught is wrong and it's actually this way you know it it's the rebellious idea about it is probably compelling to some but i don't know it's this all of this kind of stuff is fascinating as dangerous and unsafe and unhealthy as it can be. What am I though? I'm just a lonely little I'm a I'm a lowly little lobster. Lobster bits plays, you know, that's fine. A gas can empty, watering can also empty, bags of seed and weed killer. Full of garden farm implements, still cacked caked. <laughs> cacked. Still cacked in old great dirt and how and and is that cereal yeah, that's that's the food that Leonard is that his name? Lawrence. Lobo? No, not Lobo. We'll call him Leonard. Yay! Leonard was stealing. Yeah. We read about that earlier. Stealing the goodies from the food thing. You gotta find the uh, the clearance room or whatever they called it. The clearance of sins. Brother Andrew. Alright, we made it. You unlock the door using his key. Well, just realized that my video may have cut out there. Running out of space on my phone for some reason, interestingly enough, so we'll see how this goes. See if it stays with us for the rest of the time or not, or if it gets corrupted. We'll see. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see in post. All right. But yeah, but we made it to Andrew's door. I'm going to open it up, see what's inside. All right. We got some dirty table, window. Everything seems pretty normal. There's a letter here. Too dark in here, though. Um, I'll have to get a lantern. A Viola's trailer. Why did he have a key to fuel his trailer? Interesting. All right. Well, we're going to listen to his tape. Maybe he can read his journal. Okay. Got a lamp. Awesome. Sweet. Okay, now we can probably read this. Still too dark. Awesome. Still too dark. At least read the journal. We men must all be fools to... By the malarkey spat at us by the mainstream churches, the Catholic Church says we're awaiting Christ's return when they fully well know better, and the rest of Christendom believes them, the Mary worshippers. Perhaps we'll never know why the Lord waited until Father James to correct the record. Perhaps our Father in Heaven waited for the earthly man. He knew he could bear the burden with his grace. Blessed be our Lord, who saw fit to include wretches like me in his plan. I await the third coming with open arms and full of love fascinating life with the flock was good we would meet for morning prayer with father james in the chapel 
then meet for breakfast, and then we'd set off to work for the day. Some of us worked the fields, others worked on expanding the compound. We had a school teacher, we had cooks. In the evening, we would study scripture or listen to one of Father's lectures. Then it would be time for penance, more prayer, and then sleep. I slept better those early nights than I had in years. I was home. Do you know how good it feels to find home after so long? I would have done anything for Father. He saved me. I'll have to find probably some sort of lighting to light up these other rooms that I can't see right now. Maybe, maybe in Viola's trailer. That's Lillian's. Where's Viola's? Map. Uh, Leonard. Yeah, it was Leonard. Okay. Okay, Viola's is one more back. Should be anyway. Should be. Yep, found Viola's door. Sweet. Viola, unlock the tree. The tree, the trailer. It's probably too dark to read these two. Too dark. Teddy bear. Creepy teddy bear. It looks like Freddy Fazbear from here. He got a little top hat, robot legs. Okay. Too dark, too dark. Listen to the tape though. We were chosen, all of us, by the Lord. Yeah, it's pretty fast, bear. Do you know how good that feels? To be chosen? I hope you do. It's a feeling we all need in our lives. And on top of that, Father James took a special interest in me. He said he felt spiritually invigorated by my presence. He was horny. And often called me to the rectory to spend time with him. I'm not dumb, I knew, but I didn't care. I was so honored to be his chosen. He just wanted to f you. That's all he cared about. That's another thing about cult leaders. They like to find the woman they find most attractive, make them believe that they're the chosen woman, and get to town. But also, sometimes, from the woman perspective, you know, they're with the powerful alpha, and yeah. It's not always the case, of course, but it's an angle to look at things from. Gotta love the evolutionary perspective, the biological perspective, blah de blah de blah. Why people act the way they act. Fun stuff. Maybe from a Freudian perspective, maybe Father James looks like her dad. Oh. <laughs> okay, now what leads do I have? The generators, Andrew. I need to, I need a source of light. I don't know. I have to find it. Andrew's door. Can I take the lamp with me? Unfortunately, I can't. There's something I'm missing. Okay. I think we'll leave off a part one here. And, uh... Start episode two, just to make sure I get the rest of my recording in order and see if I can, you know, add more space to my phone and everything so that way I don't have to risk losing any more video. All right, guys. Thanks for watching part one here. We'll get part two up shortly. Um, not much later after this. So thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll find out the rest of what happened to this cult and what all happened between everybody in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Lobster Bits out. Mm -hmm.